Alrighty, hey guys, it's time for lunchtime devotions. I am a little bit late. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me for that. I was trying to work out my new stand. I had a friend um, bless me with one. So my phone is not having to be propped up on my Bible, my husband's Bible, and all that kind of stuff. We actually have a stand now. Yay. Um, makes it a little bit easier where I level. So anyway, when you guys pop in, say hey. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Faith and I had a good weekend with a mama's trip. We went with some friends to West Palm Beach and um, we just got to enjoy each other's company. And it was a friend of ours who had done this passport to purity thing with her daughter. And so I at like book series. And it was, I think I'm frozen, hang on. <laughs> It was like the second one of that series. So it was the passport to identity that they did, uh, her and two other friends this weekend that another mom had planned. And it was nice just to get away, try some new things. We got to do our first escape room, which was really fun. But, um, I did find out that that is not my future. I am never going to be a, uh, escape room professional because y'all, it takes like way too many brain cells. <laughs> The first one, we did like a vault and it wasn't bad. We got out of the vault um, with a few hints. Like, I don't know. I guess they were equally difficult. But the second one that we tried the second day, it was like riddles. And by that point, I was running on like lack of sleep. My This girl goes to bed early. Okay, like my kids are in bed by 8.30. By 9 o'clock, I want to be in my bed. And I didn't get to sleep until like midnight every day this weekend. So, <laughs> so listen, we're rocking a mom then. We're awake. We're here. But, um... Today, I want to talk to you guys about how the walking in the power of the Lord can change things. And so, hey, mom, when you pop in and say, hey, because I have no idea who's on here, it doesn't really say. I just have like little heads here and there. But um, anyway, so yeah, so it was a fantastic weekend, but I was not prepared for the amount of exhaustion <laughs> that would hit me today. So like, there's no makeup. It's a mom bun. You know, it's mom bun Monday. I'm telling you, we should make that an official thing. But um so anyway, it was, it was fun. I hope you guys had a great weekend. But as I was reading this morning, I'm like, Lord, I got to get ready for lunchtime devotions. Like, what are we doing? We got in in time yesterday to make it to church last night and then ran and came home and crashed. And, um, anyway, so as I was studying this morning, I'm going through a little devotional that my sister had given me. And, um, the example that she used today was the, it was a story of a circus pony. And so I kind of want us to use this analogy uh, if that's what you want to call it, to kind of compare ourselves to, are we walking in the power of God? Are we trusting him? You know, are we walking in faith and trust with the Lord or are we still just trying to like figure things out ourselves? So I'm going to start with a word of prayer. If you've got your Bibles, I was, like I said, I was running late, so I didn't type it on there, but we're going to be in second Corinthians chapter 13. If you want to turn there and I'm going to go ahead and open us with prayer before we, um, jump too far ahead of ourselves. So Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you for the women who are going to join and um, the ones who are going to watch the replay. Lord, I just pray that whatever said and done will bless your name, dear God, that it'll encourage the ones who join in, Lord. And I just pray that the thoughts and the topics that you've given us will come out clearly, that it'll empower those seeking to serve you and to grow in their faith and to break generational curses or whatever it may be that they're battling, break addictions, break, um, just for them to allow you to break the chains of darkness in their life, whatever that may look like, no matter how serious or mild it may seem, dear God, we know that whenever we serve you, we have to serve you fully. And I just pray that that message will get across in today's devotion. We give you the praise for it in Jesus name. Amen. Alrighty. So like I said, in my devotion this morning, this is the one that I'm reading. Awaken by Priscilla Shire. Like I said, my sister had given it to me, I think last year sometime, and I'm finally getting around to using it. But um, anyway, this morning it was talking about a story of a circus pony. And you know, in circuses, they have like three rings or they'll have, if it's a smaller circus, they'll have one. And so pretty much the pony's jobs are to run in circles, right? They run the ring around and around and around. And then the owners or the trainers, whoever, will ask them to maybe jump something or to pivot or whatever. But primarily the horse's job, this little pony's job is to run around the ring in circles. And so there is this little pony that she talks about in the book that 
had done this for his whole life. He was a circus pony. And finally, he got to the age where he could retire. And so he was taken to this pasture and released into this beautiful, lush pasture. There was freedom. Like, you know, he didn't have to wear his, you know, little halter. He didn't have to run. There was no trainers. He just got to relax, right? He just found freedom because he was retired. He was done working and he was exposed to complete freedom. And that little pony, even though he had left the tent of the circus and even though he had left the rings and there was no rings out in this pasture it was just beautiful lush grounds this circus pony was so used to going in circles that even when they released it into the freedom of retirement into the freedom of that pasture that his hard work was done that pony still continued to travel in circles he may have wandered around the pasture but he wandered around the pasture in a circle and so I feel like as I was reading that this morning that that could apply to us because you know sometimes we may say, you know, we serve God and we may say we're sold out to God and we may say I found freedom through Jesus Christ as my savior, but we still allow our minds to try to figure things out. You know, this pony didn't just accept the freedom that he had in this new pasture. He didn't just enjoy the freedom of his retirement where he was able to graze and just kind of hang out in the shade and drink from the brook. Like he didn't enjoy that because his brain was still programmed on how to do things. And I feel like whenever we are called to serve the Lord, we have to come to the understanding that there's going to come a point where we are not going to have all the answers. We're not going to be able to figure it out because if we don't fully rely on God and we don't trust him for the answers, then are we really walking in faith? You know, it doesn't take faith if we can figure it out. You know, these escape rooms that we did this past weekend, y'all, there was some of those we could not figure out. Like we had to use the little walkie talkie like, help, we're stuck. And the little person would come through and give us a hint and then we could figure it out. But you know, our walk with Christ is like that. Sometimes we're going to get to points where we're like, listen, we're going to be, we have an hour to escape this room. We ain't going to make it. Give me, give us two hours. We might probably then our brains are so fried. We wouldn't figure it out. Give us a couple hours. Maybe we'll figure it out. Right. And in our Christian walks, we'll get to that point where we're like, Lord, I don't, I can't figure this out. I don't know what's next. I don't know where to go. I don't know what you want me to do. And we've experienced the freedom of God, but we're not walking in faith. We're not walking in trust. We're not completely enjoying that freedom that serving Jesus brings. I feel like if you're like me and you like to plan everything out and understand everything, we get so caught up in finding answers that we forget to enjoy the freedom that is found in Christ. And so in 2 Corinthians, we're going to read um, in chapter 13, starting in verse 3, it says, Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him. But we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. So in other words, we're weak in our flesh. We're weak in ourselves. We're not going to have all the answers. Where does our power, where does our hope, where does our freedom lie? Our freedom lies in Christ Jesus. How do we break those cycles like that circus pony that even though he was retired, even though he had gotten out of the circus, even though he had a beautiful pasture and a brand new life that was traveling in circles, how do we stop that? By fully walking in trust and obedience to the Lord. By letting go of what we know, by stopping trying to figure it out and saying, Thank you, Lord. Hey, Denise. Thank you, Lord. I'm ready to experience this freedom that you have for me. I want to do what you, I want you to show me your freedom. I want to experience everything you've got planned for me because I can't figure it out myself. This is so much bigger than I am. And, you know, it goes on to say uh, in verse five, it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. In other words, how are people going to know that we're legit? Because of the way we walk, because of the way we talk, because of the way they see Jesus in us, because we're obeying the spirit of God. We're walking in the power of God. We're walking in trust and faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not walking in what we can figure out. We're not worrying about having all the answers. You know, if people are looking at you and they're seeing something different and you're walking a different life than what your mouth is professing, then you've got a problem. That would mean you're one of those reprobates. You're saying one thing and you're living something else. We don't want to get caught up in that. But how do we fix that, Kimberly? How do we, hey, Tammy, how do we fix that? How do we, how do we stop going in those circles? How do we break the cycle of the circus pony? How do we go into retirement, go into freedom, and fully experience the freedom of the Lord by walking in trust to him? By stopping what we know, because chances are what we know is sinful nature. What our flesh knows is, you know, how can I make this out to make myself look better? Or how can I figure this out so that it doesn't hurt? Or how do I figure this out so that I have, you know, something to fall back on? Listen, guys, that's not how God works. God's like, 
I'm going to handle this, but you've got to trust me with 100% of the situation. You've got to walk out in freedom. You've got to go out into the freedom of the Lord and say, okay, Lord, thank you for this blessing. Now, what do I do? And walk step by step with him because the pony just kept circling because that's all he knew. He didn't have a trainer out there to teach him. He didn't have a trainer out there saying, go be free, right? He just kept doing what he knew he always would do. And that's what happens with generational curses. We just repeat what our parents, you know, performed in front of us, what our grandparents performed in front of them. Like all we know is what we've been taught. All we know is what we see, right? And at some point in time, that circle that cycle has got to stop. How does that stop? Because we're trusting in the freedom that is only found through Jesus Christ. Because you and your own power can't figure out how to break those generational curses. You and your own power can't find freedom from addiction. You in your own power, because let me guess, you've already tried, haven't you? And it didn't work. That's because you haven't fully relied on Jesus Christ. It's because you haven't turned over your trust to him. The one that can break the cycle. The one that is the chain breaker. That song that faith sings. Well, Kim, how can you say this with so much passion? Because I've been that horse. I've been that pony. I've been the one that says, listen, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm walking in the freedom of God. But I kept making the same circles over and over and over again. How did I fix it? I came to the realization that, you know what? I'm not who I want to be. I'm not who I could be. But in order to get to that place... I need to fully rely on God. I need to know that my identity, my worth, who I am, what I'm going to do, how things are going to figure out, how my bills are going to get paid, how my kids are going to stay healthy, how my house is going to remain above my head. All of this is going to rely in the hands of Jesus Christ because I can't handle it. And once we make that understanding that, listen, my power is not in my flesh. My power is not in myself. The power, the strength, the freedom that I have is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So number one, if you don't know him as your personal savior, you don't know freedom. And you're not going to be able to find freedom. You're not going to be able to break the cycle of those circles over and over again. Regardless of how free and how lush the pasture is you're traveling in, you're never going to stop going in circles until you find Jesus Christ. Number one, it's great that you're experiencing these good things in life, but true freedom only resides through salvation of Jesus Christ. Once you accept him as your savior, then you can trust him. You know, you can't trust in something you don't believe in. And that's what it's saying here, you know, for though, in verse four, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. I don't live in power of myself. I don't know all the answers to my life. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, but you know what? I trust that Jesus will handle it whenever it gets here. And is my faith always strong? No. Do I still go back to circle in some time like, Lord, this is the situation. This is what's happening in my life. This is the problem that I'm facing. I'm going to figure out a way. And do I try to figure it out? Sometimes, yeah. Do I run ruts in my pasture circling like that circus pony? Yeah, sometimes I do. And then there comes a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm getting a little dizzy. I'm getting a little tired of this. I need a change of scenery. And I have to say, Lord, this is the situation. I've run in circles till there's ruts and I can't figure it out. Take it, Lord. Take this problem. Fix it. Help me to escape these circles. Help me to help me to fix these cycles because I don't want to do them anymore. And that only comes through knowing Jesus and the walking and trust to him. And then it goes on to say in verse oh, eight, it says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. And it goes on to say, and this also we wish even your perfection. But that key part there where it says um, in verse nine, for we are glad when we are weak and ye are strong. You know, do I enjoy, oh, hey, Brother Jay, do I enjoy um, not knowing the answers and not being organized? No, I do not. Because my personality and my mom life tell me that I need to have answers. I need to be prepared. I need to know what's going to happen and I need to know where I'm going from there. And I need to have my schedule. And when my kids ask me 8 million questions, Hey, Kristen, when my kids ask me 8 million questions, I need to have the answer. Like that's what mom life tells me. But you know what? My Christianity, my walk with God says, Kim, you're not always going to have the answers and y'all aren't either. And that's okay. It's okay to not have the answers. It's okay when we get stuck in those circles because that's all we know. Our flesh was born into sin. All we know is that circus pony going in circles. That's all he knew. So he retired. He went into the lush, beautiful pasture. And what did he do? He kept traveling in circles because it's all he knew. He wasn't trusting on uh, God. He wasn't trusting on something bigger that could handle it. He didn't have a trainer that would encourage him to break the cycle to go to. 
They turned him loose in the pasture and he kept repeating the same habits over and over and over again. How do you fix that? By finding true freedom through Jesus Christ. And number two, fully walking in faith and trust in him. So I have a few questions for you guys. Number one is, are we walking in the freedom and the power of the Lord? Are you? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Because you can't walk in the freedom and power if you don't know who he is. If you haven't accepted him as your Savior, why would you trust him? How would you be able to trust him? You can't. You got to have Jesus as your Savior first to find true freedom. And then once you find the freedom, are you walking in his power and his freedom? Or are you still trying to figure it out? Are you still running ruts in your pasture? Are you still circling like that circus pony? Are you sick and tired and ready to break the cycle? Do you believe that there's power that that can happen in your life? Are you ready for a change of scenery? Are you dizzy and tired of running those same circles over and over and over and over again, trying to figure things out, but having no solution? Then my friends, it's time to trust Jesus. My friends, you have tried everything you can to come up with an answer. You've looked for a solution. You've hunted, you've gone to doctors, you've gone to therapists, you've gone to, um, you know, maybe the AA meetings. You've gone to these places looking for freedom. You've gone to these places looking for hope. You've gone to these places looking for an answer, looking for true freedom that will only ever be found through salvation in Jesus Christ. Now, am I saying that when you come to salvation, all these things go away? No, but I'm saying that you're never going to be able to walk in trust. You're never going to be able to walk in power. You're never going to be able to walk in faith until you turn your life over to him. So it starts with salvation. It doesn't end there. This is a daily journey. You know, that pony didn't get released to the pasture and run in circles for like a day or two. This was his retirement. This was his life from now on. He got to enjoy the lush pasture. He got to enjoy the rest, the break away from that circus. But his brain couldn't let go of all he knew. And that's where we're at. All we know is not enough. These answers that we need, these questions that we have, these problems that we're trying to solve, the peace that we're looking for will only be found through Jesus Christ. So are you walking in freedom? Are you walking in the power of the Lord? And number two, if we are waiting until we understand and make sense of things, then are you really walking in faith and trust? Does it take faith if I have all the answers? Is that trusting in God? I know I'm going to pay my bills because I've got this money in savings, so I know they're going to be paid. Does that require trust in the Lord? No. Why? Because I know that money is there and I know I have enough to cover this. It's whenever we get backed into a lot, it's when we run those ruts so deep that we see no way out that we say, God, fix this. I have tried. I have run myself until I'm out of breath. I'm exhausted. I'm dehydrated. And I need you to step up and I need you to fix this. I need you to break this cycle. I need you to give me a change of scenery. I need you to show me something more than what my brain can comprehend. I need to show, I need you to show me something more than I've seen in my past. I need to, sh- I need you to show me something that maybe my, my parents or my grandparents didn't know. I need to, you to show me that there's hope. I need you to show me that there's freedom. I need to, you to show me that there's deliverance from addiction or depression or anxiety or Whatever these things are that you face, I face those, but whatever it is you face, I need to know that there's freedom. I need to see hope. I need to see a change. That's fully relying on Jesus. When you've run your race and you're so tired in that rut, you pray, God, find my way out. Help me find my way out. And then we shut off our brain. We shut off our know-how and we trust what he's telling us. We walk step by step in the freedom of God. Why? Because we stop trying to figure it all out ourselves. That's beyond us. We're never going to get there. But we fully trust God to say, listen, I thank you for this freedom that I found in you and I'm trusting you to handle it. Tell me where to go from here. And I'll tell you what, if you pray, this has been my prayer these last several months is that I don't want to just be a Christian. I want to walk in the spirit of the Lord. I want to, before I cook breakfast, God, is this what you want me to do? What do you want us to do today? Are we doing school? Is there somewhere we need to be? Is orchestrate my life, plan my life. And if it doesn't line up with my schedule, then feel free to change it. That's fine. I want to be obedient, but I want to walk in the spirit of the Lord because that's when I'm going to accomplish things. And this year that has been my prayer. And I have definitely seen the power of God move stronger in my life because he said he would give me the desires of my heart. And that's the desire of my heart. I want to see God move. I want to be beneficial to the kingdom of Christ. I want the spirit of the Lord to move me. I want to walk in faith and trust, even though it's uncomfortable and it's kind of scary. And I'm walking in new waters I may have never been in before. And I'm having to fully trust God to answer basic questions that I probably would know the answer to, but I'm not going to risk it and screw it up (laughs) because God didn't say he needed my help. That's where I am. And it's scary and it's hard, but praise God. If you ask him and make the desires of your heart, you want more of Jesus. He'll meet you there. He will give you the desires of your heart. 
And so my last question for you guys today is, are you ready to fully experience the freedom that is found in Christ? Maybe you come on here and you're like, Kim, I don't even know who Jesus Christ is. I've never prayed the sinner's prayer. That's fine. You have to understand that you believe that Jesus is who he said he is, the son of God that came spotless. He gave his life on the cross to die for you because he loved you. He was the perfect sacrifice. He paid the price that you will never be able to pay. But not only did he die on that cross for your sins, he went into the tomb and three days later, he rose from the grave. He took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. They have no more power. Why? Because Jesus reigns. Jesus is Lord. And once you understand that you are a sinner and you ask for forgiveness from Jesus Christ and you ask him to come into your heart and to save you and to help you change your ways, that's the first step. That's salvation, guys. That's it. That's all there is to it. Yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I believe who Jesus Christ is. And yes, I ask him to come in and to change me and to clean me and to help me walk the path that he wants me to walk. That's the first step. So if you've made that step, maybe you're a Christian and you're like, Kim, I'm just going through some really tough stuff. I really want to walk in the freedom of God, but it's really scary. Yeah, girl. Hello. Yes, it is. I'm walking there now. I am looking for the freedom of God. I'm looking for the spirit of God to direct me in every situation. And there are times that y'all don't make sense. There are times this past week. We were, um, we had gone through our bills and things and you guys know that our finances have looked a little bit weird lately. And, um, we felt we had a, a missionary friend family who was going to be facing some surgery and we just felt impressed upon us to, um, donate a little bit to them. Now, listen, this past week we had a good paycheck. I can't guarantee that's going to happen because we don't know what's going on with my husband's work. It's here, there, everywhere. We don't know. We're just guessing. You're going to have to wait. So anyway, we're, <laughs> we're in the middle of this trying to, um, we took some money from savings to send to these people, long story short. And, um, I told my husband, I was like, okay, I'm trying to like build up our savings. So we have something to fall back on. Right. And I'm like, we gave our, the portion of our tithe plus this certain amount of money from savings to this family to help cover medical expenses because we felt like that's what the Lord wanted us to do. Okay. I'm not saying you have to like spend money. You do what God tells you to do. It's what he told us to do. We tried to be obedient. And, um, anyway, so I used like cash app or whatever and I sent the money and I'm like, okay, Lord, we have like eight bucks. <laughs> what are you, what are you trying to teach me here? I'm trusting you because I really felt like you told me to do this, but I don't know what I'm going to do. And now let me tell you something. Okay. Big surprise. The next week, like Jeremiah had the opportunity to um, minister at a church on Thursday night, which gave a love offering. Um, between that and then another amount that came in um, this week, it made up everything we gave to that family plus like 25 bucks. And I'm like, okay, Lord, that was a scary moment for me. When he, my husband's like, transfer this amount of money, we're going to give it away. And I'm like, okay, and I want to be a submissive wife, and I want to trust God, and, I'll, and I know that he knows best, and I know that he's going to provide. But as I'm transferring that money and sending it and just waving goodbye and hoping that it's going to be there next week when our, you know, pay schedule is already a little sketchy, I'm like, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And is it hard? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. But if you make sense and you can think it out and you've got all of the answers, then are you really walking in faith and trust? Are you really trusting God to guide you? No. Why? Because you think you've got it figured out. That's who I am. I'm the figure it outer, by the way. Like, I'm, that's a new word. Figure it outer. That would be me. I'm in that classification. I'm going to try to have all the answers and I'm going to know the plan and I'm going to know what we're eating, when, and how we're paying our bills. But listen, there comes a time in life when that is not trusting God. Going through the motions is not trusting God. Are you okay? Are you ready for God to do a new thing in your life? Are you ready to say, Lord, I trust you. And even though I've been running this circle like a circus pony, and even though I can't break the cycle, I'm trusting you to show me a new way. I'm trusting you to deliver me out of this circle, this dizziness, this exhaustion that I've been running time after time after time. I know that us moms, a lot of times we talk about you know, I just feel so stuck in a rut. I just feel like I keep doing the same things over and over and over again. And surely there's got to be a change. Surely there's, surely there's got to be something else. I'm so exhausted of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And my question for you guys is, are you ready to walk in the freedom of the Lord? You know, do I always enjoy getting up and washing dishes? No. But whenever I'm praying and I'm trying to walk in the spirit of the Lord and the freedom of the Lord, I see how that's a blessing more than it is a chore. You know, I can say, I get to do this instead of I have to do this. It changes your perspective. It changes your mind. Why? Because I'm no longer trying to figure it out. I'm relying on him to just come through. 
I'm relying on God to call the shots. And all I have to do is walk right behind him. All I have to do, you know, we've been trail riding. I don't know about you guys, but some of these trail horses that are out there, they are so well trained that they just go where the guide horse goes. If that one turns to the left, they're going to the left. If they go to the right, they're going to the right. And they just like, their head is planted behind the other one's tail and they just go. And that's how it has to be with God. That's how our walk has to be. But as long as we're a circus pony running in circles, digging ruts, exhausting ourselves and doing what we know to do, we're not walking in the spirit of the Lord. We're not, we're not cashing in on that freedom that Jesus Christ offers us. And so guys, if you're tired, if you're exhausted, if you're in a rut and ready for a change of scenery, then are you ready to walk in the freedom of Jesus Christ? If you are, tell him, ask him to guide you, ask him to show you the way out, ask him to teach you baby steps one day at a time, slowly and surely how to walk in the freedom that is only found in him. And if you make that the desire of your heart, God promises that he will answer you and come through. He says, I will give you the desires of your heart. If you want a new way, if you want freedom, tell Jesus and trust him. And then follow him. Walk in faith. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary. You're going to be seeing new territory. But you know what? You're not alone in it. Jesus will go with you every step of the way. So I hope this has been an encouragement. I hope this whole thing has made sense. I tried to make notes today as the Lord was giving it to me. Um, but yeah, so our example today was the, re the retired circus pony. And then our scriptures were found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. So I love you guys. I will see you next week. Feel free to share the story, share the video, whatever with a friend. That's great. Um, if you know somebody who needs a little encouragement or who is ready to break that cycle, feel free to share anything you hear from Lunchtime Devotions with somebody. That's an encouragement to me. And I'm trusting that whatever goes forth from here will be an encouragement to somebody else. So y'all keep sharing Jesus, keep loving Jesus and um, stop being a circus pony. <laughs> it's a hard lesson I'm learning myself, but I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Take care.